In the last video, we have started an explanation of how intermolecular interactions work, and we have uh, studied fully how the attraction or repulsion between two ions uh, is captured by uh, Coulomb's law, which is what we have right here. Okay, so now we move forward by trying to study other types of attractions, uh, intermolecular attractions, and the next one that we're going to study is ion dipole. Okay, so uh, think about the interaction between uh, HCl and a sodium ion. Okay, HCl is not a fully formed ion, it doesn't have uh, uh, permanent full charges, but it has partial charges, right? We recognize that uh, the chloride, uh, chlorine ion has a positive uh, negative end, and uh, the hydrogen atom uh, represents the positive end of the molecule. Okay, so uh, here we have the attraction of something that has a negative pole uh, uh, with the positive ion, and that should be a stabilizer. Okay, so the question is how do we study uh, this type of interactions? We can do it with partial charges, as we explained before uh, for the, uh, in the Coulomb's law, Okay, but a more traditional way to do this is by invoking something that is called the dipole moment. Okay? The general definition of the dipole moment, uh, which is captured by the letter mu, is simply a product of the charge uh, times distance. Okay, so th this means that the dipole moment has units of Coulomb times mu in the SI unit. Right, uh, we're actually going to be calculating the dipole moment for highly complicated molecules, and the dipole moment is a vector, okay, so it's going to be pointing in uh, a given direction of space. Now, the best way to do this for complicated molecules is to actually calculate what the dipole moment is in each of the directions of space, and then uh, use those to calculate the overall uh, vector. Okay, so the idea is that uh, you can calculate the dipole moment vector in the x direction simply by uh, adding the products of the coordinate of each atom in that axis, the x-axis, multiplied by the partial charge of each atom. Okay, so you can repeat this for every single of the axes, and you will get the dipole moment in each direction. Okay, so that will be the sum of the coordinate of each atom in the y-axis multiplied uh, by the charge, and for uh, the z-axis will be exactly the same thing. Okay, the z coordinate multiplied by the charge. And in the end, uh, because the dipole moment is a vector, you simply can calculate the overall dipole moment of a molecule as this, using the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, mu y squared plus mu of z squared. Okay, so we're actually going to see how this works by calculating the dipole moment of the HCl molecule. Okay, so uh, let's erase this for just a little bit. And then again, see how we will calculate the dipole moment for uh, the HCl molecule. All right, so I'm going to orient the molecule like this. And uh, as it turns out, uh, the coordinates of this Cl atom are going to be 0, 0, 0. This means that uh, it's in the origin of coordinates. And the coordinates of the uh, hydrogen atom uh, are going to be 0, 0 and then plus 1.275 Anstrom. Okay, again, that will be the coordinate in the x-axis, coordinate in the y-axis, and coordinate uh, in the z-axis. Okay, so now we also need to know what the partial charges on each atom are, and the partial charge on the uh, hydrogen atom is going to be plus 0 0.176 uh, elementary units of charge, and of course then uh, the charge of uh, the chloride, uh, chlorine atom is going to be minus 0 0.176 elementary charges. Okay, so now with this, we're actually ready to calculate what the dipole moment would be in every vector. Okay, so uh, let's start with uh, mu x, which I'm actually going to draw uh, right here. Okay, and what, you, what you do is you multiply the coordinate of each atom by its charge, uh, and then uh, sum them all. Okay, so for chlorine, we'll have that the coordinate is 0. And then uh, you would multiply this by the charge, which is minus 0 0.176e. Okay, and to this you add the, uh, uh, the product of the coordinate times the charge for the other atom. Okay, so 0 multiplied by plus 0 0.176e. Okay, so obviously uh, all of that is going to be 0, and that's because the coordinates in the x-axis for uh, H and CL are 0. 
The same thing would happen for the uh, y-axis because the coordinates are going to be zero and zero in the y-axis. Okay, but the mo uh, molecule is aligned uh, along the z-axis. Okay, so this is what we've chosen to call the z-axis, and that means that there will be a dipole moment in that axis. Okay, so how do we calculate it? Now let's erase this. And then for mu, uh, the dipole moment in the z-axis would be uh, the coordinates of each atom in uh, the product of the coordinate of each atom times the partial charge in that particular axis. Okay, so 0, 1, 7, 6, uh, E. And okay, this is going to be 0, but now we actually look, take a look at uh, the product of the charge times the coordinate in that axis, and we actually see that this will not be 0. Okay, so the coordinate of uh, the H atom in the C axis is uh, 1.275 Armstrong. And then uh, you have to multiply this by the charge which is plus 0 0.176 elementary units. And again, this is not going to be 0, as you will see. OK? Right, so I'm going to uh, spell out this calculation right here. Let's see if I can put it right there. OK, notice that uh, we would like to use here uh, SA units. OK, so uh, notice that this, when you transform it into meters, is going to be 10 to the minus 10. OK, so mu of C is going to be equal, all of this is zero, plus uh, 1.275, 10 to the minus 10 meters, multiplied by this. Okay, so it's uh, 0 0.176 times the elementary charge, which has a value of 1.602, 10 to the minus uh, 19 coulombs, right? So that is 0 0.176 multiplied by uh, the elementary charge, which is 1.602, 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. OK? That will be the dipole moment in the c-axis. Right, so when you carry out that operation, you find that mu of c, which I can then uh, put here, is equal to 3.54, 10 to the minus 30 coulombs times meter. Times meter. OK? Now, uh, this is actually, uh, I think it's, it's uh, 3.59, 10 to the minus 30 uh, coulombs times meter. Now, this is a pretty awful number. It's very, very awkward, okay, because the exponent here uh, is 10 to the minus 30, which is difficult to work with. Okay, so what we actually do is transform this into a number that is much simpler. Okay, so there's a unit of dipole moment, which is called the divide, and uh, that actually, uh, when you transform this, into the divide units, you will get dipole moments that, that are very easy to understand. Okay, as it turns out, one divide is equal to 3.335, 10 to the minus 30 coulombs meter. Okay, so what this means is that in uh, uh, the dipole moment along the z-axis for our HCl molecule is going to have a dipole moment of slightly uh, uh, higher than one divide. As a matter of fact, when you do the exact calculation, this happens to be 1.08 device, which is a very nice uh, number. It's a, a number very easy to understand. Now you can compare the dipole moment of two molecules and then say, well, if the dipole moment of one molecule is one device and the dipole moment of the other molecule is 1.5 device, uh, then the dipole moment of the second molecule is 50% is greater. And again, uh, we use that you, you just, we use that just for convenience. Okay, so we have calculated the dipole moments in every one of the axes for HCl. Obviously, uh, the dipole moment in the x and y axis were zero, uh, and then the dipole moment in the c axis, which is uh, this axis, was not zero. It's one point of eight device. So then we're ready to actually uh, calculate the overall dipole moment of the molecule. Okay, which of course, if this is zero, this is zero, and this is one point of eight device squared, is going to give you one point of eight device. Okay, that will be the dipole moment uh, of this molecule. Now, the dipole moment is a vector, which means that it has uh, a magnitude, okay, which is this value of 1.08 device, or this value, if you prefer to use Coulomb's 10 meter, but it also has an orientation. Okay, now the orientation actually, uh, the nomenclature for the, for the orientation changes from uh, a scientist to scientist. The one that we're going to use uh, uh, in these videos is going to be that the dipole moment is pointing from the negative end of the molecule to the positive end of the molecule. And again, it actually doesn't matter uh, how, do you, how you choose that vector to point as long as you always choose the same convention. So again, our convention uh, uh, in, this, in this series of videos is going to be 
the debit moments point always from the negative end to the positive end. Okay, so now we actually have here the dipole moment, and that means that we're in principle ready to explain how this dipole moment now interacts with an ion. Okay, because that's uh, what we're set out to do. We're trying to inter uh, calculate the interaction of an ion with a dipole um, molecule. All right, so uh, again, we can just erase this molecule right here and then try to see. Now that we know what the dipole moment is and where it's pointing, we can actually see uh, how the interaction with a ion would be. All right, so we go back to our um, uh, sodium ion interacting with uh, HCl. And again, we know now that there's a dipole moment okay, pointing in this direction where you have here a negative end, and here you have a positive end. So this should be a stabilizing interaction. All right, so how is the equation? It turns out that the equation is actually not that different from this one. Okay, for an ion dipole, the equation for the attraction energy is equal to minus uh, the charge Okay, so that charge that you have right here, multiplied by the dipole moment, okay, which is what you would just calculate for uh, HCl, that 1.08 device, okay, divided by 4 pi E naught. Notice that this is actually not so different uh, to what you have for the ion ion interaction, but here comes the significant difference, R squared. Okay? So again, comparing the ion ion uh, Coulomb's law with uh, the attraction between uh, an ion and a dipole, we see a couple of changes. First, what is the origin of the attraction? Well, the origin of the attraction is this interaction between uh, an ion and a dipole, and that's what you have right here, okay? And the second thing that we worry about is the range. Okay, notice that the range is actually going to be shorter than in the case of ion-ion interactions, okay? That means that if you separate this ion and this dipole, Okay, uh, the attraction is going to die off, it's going to disappear much faster okay, than what you would have if these were just two ions. Okay? So what we learned about the ion-dipole interaction is that it's shorter ranged than ion-ion. And again, notice that uh, what causes the interaction is not two charges, but a charge and a dipole. Okay? Uh, so in the next uh, few videos, we're actually going to try to explain uh, other types of interactions where you have different things causing the interaction on different ranges. Okay? To wrap this uh, uh, discussion of the ion dipole moment up, okay, uh, notice that uh, this equation should depend on the orientation of the ion on the dipole. Okay, here I've chosen uh, the ion, the positive ion, to be close to the negative end of the molecule. Okay? And uh, that gives me this expression. But I could have chosen something different. For example, I could have chosen this. Okay, and in this case, what you actually have is that the ion is facing the positive end of the molecule. In that case, what you should expect to find is not an attraction, but a repulsion. Okay, so uh, something that is quite important about this expression is that it actually only works in the orientation that we have written it initially. Okay, so it's going to be the most stabilizing interaction. Okay, this equation only works when, again, you are in the most stabilizing orientation that you have. Okay, so it wouldn't work if you have the sodium ion right here, Okay, or the sodium ion right there. It only works when you have this alignment of the uh, uh, ion with the dipole pointing that way. Okay.